All right, hey guys, I just got back from my cross country meet, so sorry if I'm a little grungy, but it is science time. All right, I know, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. We are gonna talk about dun, 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 functional groups. Now, okay, I know some of you are not excited about this. It will involve some chemistry. Don't get freaked out by all of this back here um, and a little bit of memorization, but we're gonna work through it together and talk about why functional groups are so important. Now, not only are functional groups useful in being able to predict reactions of molecules and how they'll react in certain areas or being able to recognize molecules, but they're also going to be important in lots of different industry purposes as well. So if you want to go into something like pharmaceuticals or biomedical engineering or even cosmetics or perfume, um, you'll be able to predict different characteristics of molecules like their solubility, their boiling point, their reactivity with other molecules just by knowing the functional group. So they'll be really useful not only in this class but in life kind of depending on what you're going to go into. So stick around and learn something. All right, so functional groups, before we get into those, let's talk a little bit about molecules. Now we know in biology we're going to talk a lot about um, monomers and polymers. So mono meaning one, our prefix meaning one, mer is just a unit. Um, a monomer is one unit, and polymers are made up of lots of monomers put together. So here I have a bunch of monomers, which are our amino acids here. And then when we put a bunch of amino acids together, we get, are going to get a polymer, a long chain of the same thing-ish. So um, different types of reactions will put polymers together called polymerization. We are making polymers, it's kind of a cool word. Um, and one of those is dehydration synthesis. So dehydration kind of sounds back, it's like, I'm dehydrated, I have no water. Where is my water? Oh, it's over there. Um, but actually we're putting together something by taking away the molecules that make up water, which are in fact H2, oh, excuse me, the elements that will make up water. Um, so if we need to put these two amino acids together, so what we can do is actually get rid of two hydrogens, get rid of an oxygen, and we can link them together. And that's why it's called dehydration synthesis. We are synthesizing two things, but we're getting rid of a water molecule. The other way around, taking molecules apart, um, is actually called hydrolysis. Um, lysis, like breaking open a cell. Can you see that? Um, means to break something apart, so we're breaking apart a molecule. And hydro means water, so we actually add a water to break something apart. And we'll put it back in here. All right, enough about monomers and polymers. Let's get to our functional groups. Okay, we're talking about a lot of um, a lot of different things this year, um, but one of the most important elements is gonna be carbon. Carbon is our like molecule of life because it can bond with so many different things and it is existent in all of our organic compounds that are necessary to light, life, like nucleic acids and, and lipids and carbohydrates. Um, so as we talk about that, we're gonna talk about the molecules that surround the carbon and these are gonna be called our functional groups. So our functional groups are starting over here. You'll see them in your book as well. Depending on what list you look at, you may have a different uh, list, but these are some of the main ones that are really important. Now, when we look at these functional groups, um, we should be able to look at them right off the bat and recognize some of their characteristics. But right now, I just want you to sort of look at their structure for today and jot down the things that we talk about. So, getting to our first one. Um, our first functional group, group, blah, 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 group is hydroxyl, which can also be just abbreviated as OH or HO. So we have an oxygen and hydrogen together at the end of a carbon. So again, remember our carbon can bond in four different places. So here it will bond with an oxygen, there's an extra hydrogen over here, and whatever is gonna be going on in the rest of the molecule. So our class that this functional group belongs to are our alcohols. And generally you can recognize an alcohol just by the name because it ends in OL for the most part, like ethanol, all. This is our example. So our functional group is over here and the rest of it that's attached is going to make up our specific molecule. Most alcohols are polar um, and it's going to bond with water to dissolve other molecules. Um, so, and of course, ethanol is the molecule that is um, in alcoholic drinks and we will see it in our uh, fermentation as well. All right, um, carbonyl or carbonyl, however you want to say it, um, also called aldehydes. Um, so this is our aldehyde class. Our example molecule is um, acetaldehyde. You see that our actual formula is right here, and feel free to pause. I'm gonna talk through this really fast. You can jot these down and make your list as complete as it needs to be. Um, so we have our carbon double bonded with oxygen here, and as well as our hydrogen. So we can have our CHO just be the regular old um, indication of our carbonyl or carbonyl group. Um, these are reactive groups. 
This is a group of reactive molecules, and they're involved in lots of energy re releasing reactions. So this is our example. Um, very close really, closely related are going to be our ketone class. So our keto group right here. And you'll notice it's very similar to our carbonyl or carbonyl group in that we have a double bond with oxygen next to our carbon. Now, the only real difference between the two of these is this is where our um, carbon and oxygen are, have that double bond within the molecule, and this is when it's on the end of the molecule. So you see the difference, and there's actually an extra hydrogen there too. So our ketones, for example, like acetone, are going to be really important in our carbohydrates and also in some energy-releasing reactions. So go ahead and make sure you have all of these jotted down before we move forward. You can pause. Okay, let's move on. So our next four functional groups, we're going to start with our carboxyl. Um, again, our little indicator is COOH. We have a double bond with oxygen here, also bonded with oxygen at the end of our carbon. So we will have things like acetic acid fall into this class. Um, acetic acid obviously is acidic. This is the component in vinegar that's going to give it the smell and make it acidic. Um, and so what this can do is actually uh, have uh, this hydrogen ion be donated in living tissues um, and it's going to be also used in energy reactions as well. All right, finally, one of my favorites, we're getting to the amino group. So amino group, we're going to have RR, which I think I forgot to mention. RR is just our side chain, whatever is attached to this functional group to make the rest of the molecule unique. So we will have our N, our nitrogen here, bonded with two hydrogens. Now this one, of course, um, is sort of at the end of a carbon-containing uh, molecule. So this particular functional group doesn't have carbon within it, but it's generally going to be attached to a carbon. So we can abbreviate this by dash NH2. Our amines are the class. And our example, it would be glycine, which in fact is an amino acid, one of our 20 essential amino acids in our living organisms. So our amino groups are going to be most present in amino acids. It's going to accept hydrogen ions to form um, uh, this particular group NH3 plus in living tissues. Okay, um, let's take a break really quick and talk about amino acids. You probably should have learned this in your reading already, but this is our structure of an amino acid. We have a carbon at the center. Um, we have a side chain, which is our R group. We have, if you notice, our amino group on this side, and then we have a carboxyl group on the other side, and they will link up like this along the way, but the side chain is what's going to make it unique and whether it's going to be polar or nonpolar, hydrophobic or hydrophilic, and that's going to influence how our protein is actually folded. And don't worry, we will get into our protein folding much or very soon. Okay. Um, so again, amino groups, amines. All right, let me lift this up a little bit so you guys can see the phosphate. Another fun functional group is our phosphate group. This one is very easy to remember because it looks so different from the others. We have a phosphate attached to four oxygens. Um, so we will see organic phosphate, I didn't redraw it because it looks pretty much the same, um, in so many important compounds. Uh, for example, our phospholipid bilayer has a phosphate head and then, of course, fatty acid tails to make up our cell membrane. Um, the phosphate itself is negative or has a negative charge, but it is also present in ATP, which will give us a lot of energy. It's really important for our cellular energy. And then, of course, it is present in our DNA as well. And in fact, ATP and DNA are related in that they share that phosphate in there. All sorts of commonalities because they're both nucleic acids. All right, I think it's time for a dance break. Let's take one. Now it's lunchtime and I'm hungry again. I don't know where I should begin. Maybe I'll get some super salmon. Back to functional groups. All right. <laughs> Finally, let's we have one last one. Our sulfhydryl group. This is our side chain attached to a sulfur and a hydrogen. Our thiols. Um, is our class, and our example is cysteine, which is one of our amino acids that has a special sulfur group on the end of it. You can notice our amino acid structure if we flip it on its side a little bit, um, as we see here. Okay. Um, these are really important in forming our disulfide bridges, which um, can make really strong bonds in proteins, which we will read about in our text as well. All right, that was really fast with all our functional groups. Please remember to pause and go back. And I do want you to memorize these structures. Kind of annoying, I know. But our functional groups are very, very important in AP biology. All right, see you guys later.